asking for a little more each time. We're trying to see if we can move to that point where he has an understanding of hold and we'll hold on to that object until we ask for it. Hey everybody, and welcome back to our formal retrieving work series. We're going to be showing you step-by-step step what you need to do to take your dog to being a excellent retriever. And we're gonna be doing that with Legend here. We're gonna get started with him. If you haven't seen the first couple videos, you need to go back and watch them first. We're gonna put a playlist together that's gonna show these step-by-step. Step. If you're not watching this video from the playlist, you've probably missed something, so go back and watch that. If this is your first time to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate everybody that uh, subscribes and it's drastically a smaller percentage of the people that are watching the videos. So go and subscribe. Now, let's get started with a little bit of refresher for him. Um, we're still in the early stages. We got him comfortable on the table first and you can see his tail's up. He's happy to walk up and down the table with me. Just a quick loop like that is about all we need to start off our session. Now, the last time we did uh, him holding our hand here. Good. Uh, uh, uh. This is why we do these refreshers. Good. Then we're going to move right on to the object that we left off with last time. Now it's important that you keep these sessions shorter. You do not want to see from anybody here doing a 20 or a 30 or a 40 minute retrieving session. It's asking too much. This is very formal, very structured work and you're going to burn your dog out to the point where they can get, you know, have resentment for the training. They don't want to be here. They don't want to be doing it. Keep the sessions short. Keep them on uh, a situation where they're still willing to work and still willing to learn. Now, if you're watching these videos from the beginning, you can tell we're, we're still in the same day with Legend. I haven't changed my clothes or anything else. And I want you to understand if your dog is excelling, just like he is, you can do multiple steps in a shorter period of time, but you have to be able to read your dog. As long as you're still focused, still willing to work, you can and have passed or show a complete understanding of step before where you're at, move to the next step. It's very important that you understand what your dog's expectation is at each step and what the next step is so that you can help them to move as fast as is possible while still maintaining a strong understanding. The faster we get through this, the faster we have an understanding, the faster we can get back to more fun things like retrieving drills and hunting birds in the field. So we're gonna move right into this object, which you did pretty well with. Good. Now, what I want to be able to do is get a few seconds and a slight step away from him <laughs> you see the head drop. And now we're just trying to help prevent him from making a mistake so that we can condition the right behavior. Good. So he's not quite ready for me to take, whoop, take that step back. We're going to do another one, see if we can get closer. Uh -huh. Good, that looks really, really good. Let's give him just a little walk up and down the table. Now the importance of this is basically resetting his brain. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is do one rep down here, and then we'll go back to that end of the table. Movement is going to be important. There ends up being a lot of stationary work. Uh -huh. Good, which can kind of do the opposite of what you're looking for in a sense of, and making it more difficult later in this process to get your dog to actually move to fetch things. So let's see here. One more rep with this. If it looks good, we're going to move on to a new object. Uh -huh. yeah. The head up. Uh -huh. Good. That's really good, buddy. All right. So as we move through this, I talked about this being, oh, here's a little wooden one. Um, this being diameter being small makes it the easiest for him to work through. As we move up the ladder, we're going to progressively get bigger around. We have a canvas option. Stop, please. Stay out of the bucket. We have a DT system soft mount. So these are both DT systems, but um, a canvas option. We have a soft mount. This is more of a rubber option. And then we have 
a this would be a fire hose style bumper. This one kind of tends to be a favorite. Um, these are all similar in diameters. And then we have a Kong branded, this is more foam. It's just a different texture, but it is about the same. Now, when you're going through this process, you break the retrieving work down as we're doing here. It's, it's a strange thing to see how the dog's brain operates, but they seem to, I'm gonna put you up so you get yourself in trouble. Um, they seem to almost require teaching everything. It's like, no, I learned how to retrieve or how to hold that one object, but I don't understand how to hold anything else. None of this really seems to truly cross over until you've built a generalized enough understanding of hold by using lots of different sizes, textures, and shapes. So um, we're going to move into this next realm, basically, which are these, uh, this approximate size. We're going to start Canvas, and hopefully, if he does well, we'll be able to work through those four and then end this session. We got an idea and a goal of where we want to go, but we're going to read him. Good. We're going to read him to make sure that we're not moving too fast. Good. That's really good. So we got a couple holds of that. We're going to move on to the next one. Pace is important. Move through this relatively quickly while still maintaining a good understanding. He's already fighting this one a lot more. This has different textures, something that he's not quite as used to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, now, the fact that each one of these things I said is going to be like teaching something new. The more you teach, the easier each new thing is going to become. So don't be, don't be worried about the fact that I'm saying everything is new. It's only going to get easier as we go. We'll do another one with this. Good boy. That was a really nice hold. We're going to move on to this fire hose bumper. Uh -huh. Again, something new. It's a different texture. You can see he's fighting me a little bit more. Uh -huh. We're going to show him you got to hold this just the same. Good. Very nice. We're going to move to this one. You're going to learn, too, which one your dog uh, enjoys the most. And that's the one I want you to cling to for each new step that we start working for. I want you to use whichever one your dog seems to do the best with that we can build off of success. A little step back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good. Asking for a little more each time. We're trying to see if we can move to that point where he has an understanding of hold and we'll hold on to that object until we ask for it. Um, or in this situation, we're more or less just taking it. We don't use specifically a give out or drop cue because most of the time people get into such a habit. Good. People get into such a habit of reaching and saying give or drop or out. And that process, dogs anticipate the cue is coming, they anticipate the process and they start spitting that as you're reaching for it. We don't want that. So we teach them through lots of reps and conditioning that once it's in their mouth, they're gonna hold on to it until I say it's mine and take it from them. They're gonna learn also not to fight you for it. So it, it becomes a really good understanding and a really good situation not to have dropped birds or lost birds along the way or bumpers or anything else. I'm gonna do another rep here. Uh -huh. We'll see a little bit of resistance. Ah, there's one good. Verbal correction, catch him. We're still trying to build off of success. I don't want him to get it out of his mouth. Good boy. And this is going to be a really great place to end this session. Now, we talked about putting him up on the table, and the same thing is um, we want to do the same thing in reverse. We want to take him off the table. I don't want him to understand how to jump off. And there's a specific way that we recommend to do this. A lot of people might be saying, what's the big deal? Why take the dog on and off the table? Well, at some point in time, they may feel like it's a good idea to try and jump. They're attached with a chain here. We don't want your dogs to hurt themselves. So we want them to understand jumping on and off the table is not an option. You need to be lifted on and off the table. It should help them as you move along and it's gonna help protect them, keep them a little safer. So they don't make a mistake that ends up hurting them. 
we take all of the dogs off the table backwards, basically exactly the opposite of the way we put them on. Now, part of that is it's kind of uncomfortable for them to go off backwards and it instills more of an understanding of, ooh, maybe I should actually stay on this table. And if you have that response from your dog, then you know that they've got a pretty good understanding and you shouldn't have any issues with jumping. Guys, this is all we've got for this step. Thanks for watching. This is Legend, I'm the guy with the pink gun, and we will see you in his next video.